going to get this thing going. Man, God is powerful. He is powerful. My name is Joey. I'm one of the pastors here. And one more time, y'all excited to be here. I just got to hear. I got to feel it. I, I got to be, I, I got to know we're together this morning. If you're a first time guest, you probably can tell we like to, we like crowd participation. And so feel free to, to yell and to agree and to say amen and, and feel free because we're together this morning. And I believe God is going to be doing something incredible. We're going to continue our series, Core. Who was here last week for the first week with Pastor Josh? Didn't he do an incredible job with Core? And we're talking about how we are building the foundation of our church. Someone say Core. core. It's really a theme for our church this year. Now give me a Core and, and dab on it. Core. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. We got to try that one more time, Pastor Ron. We're going to go core and then dab, all right? Uh, this is all I can do. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Core. Uh. You got to make the noise, too. Uh. All right, I'm going to stop there until I get too much. I get out of my, <laughs> I, yeah, I go too far. But we're talking about the foundation of our church. And how we're building the core believers, the core foundation, the core principles to who we are at Bridge Church. And Pastor Josh gave us an incredible message, kind of given the overall vision for the rest of the year. That we're going to be a church that is built and have a strong core. And so last week he talked about the overview of that. This week we're talking about how to make leadership core. Someone say Leadership core. And some of y'all are saying, Joey, I'm not a leader. I've been here before and I've, I've, I've actually said this to people. I said, hey, you're a leader. And people here are like, no, I'm not. Don't put that on me. They walk away quickly. But can I tell you that leadership is influence. And if you have influence in relationships around you, guess what? You're a leader. And so for us as Bridge Church to be the church that we believe God has wired us to be, we have to make leadership core to our lives. And when we do that, our lives change and our world changes around us. Y'all ready for that? Well, here's the, here's the powerful thing about leadership and influence is that I believe that the key to the influence that every single one of us have is the gifts that God has given us. Someone say gift. Yeah. Believe it or not, every single one of us has been given an incredible gift. Say, I have a gift. Yeah. We're gonna do a little, uh, we're gonna do a little, uh, it's not a song, but we're gonna have a little saying this whole talk. So I'm gonna, at every point, we're gonna say this together, okay? Y'all with me? All right? The phrase is, God has given me a game-changing gift, all right? So we're going to say it together really quick. When I say God has given me, you do the last part, okay? I got I to gotta see it. All right, so you say the last part. I'll say the first part, okay? God has given me a game-changing gift. But you got to say it like you really want it, though. You got to say it like you want it. God has given us a game-changing gift. God has given us a game-changing gift. Hey. I'll, I'll keep it there. I'm going to stop right there. God has given us a game-changing gift. God has given us a game-changing gift. And the truth is, this gift is one of the greatest ways that you can influence the world around you. Some people here at our church are gifted with kids, and they love working with kids. I can think of people like Rick and Deb Cooley. When I see them working with kids, man, they have a gift. And when they're living through that gift, oh my goodness, the world is changing. There's so many gifts that every single one of us have. And today we're going to be talking about how we can live through that gift. How each one of us can, one, identify that gift and live in that gift. You know when you see a gifted person. You know what I'm saying? Y'all with me? You know when you see, you know, I can, I can hear my grandpa in my ear when he sits at a football game and someone's really good. He always said, mm, that boy is gifted. You know, you ever heard that before? Mm, he's gifted. 
When I was in seventh grade, I had this situation. I, I joined track, and I joined track out of, honestly, I don't even know why I did it. I was not athletic one bit, but I wanted to. And honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, it was for the girls. I'll be honest, I'll just be honest. I'll put it out there, it's for the girls. But I, I joined track, and so the first meet of the year, I will never forget it. Because I get up to the track and I think my heat is going to be with all these runners and I'm like, whatever, I'll get third or fourth and, you know, I'll just do my thing. Well, what happened was they got the heats mi mixed up and I am st there was only me and another individual in this race. And the individual that, that was in this race, I'll call him Jerry today, was the fastest person in the city for a time. And I'm looking over at him and thinking... They got me on something here. What are y'all doing? And the heats got mixed up, so there was just two of us. And it was a 400 race that one time around the track, just one time, and it was me and him. And I'm looking over at him thinking, this ain't gonna be good. <laughs> this is not gonna be good. And so I got my 80s hair. I've got some Jordan shorts that go past my knees. <laughs> and I've got my Walmart running shoes. <laughs> Because y'all know I rep, rep the Walmart running shoes. And he's got these nice little track shoes. He's got the tights. He's got the headband. And he's looking at me like, oh, I'm going to smoke this kid. And he's, he's, uh, he's jumping and stretching. And, and I'm kind of over here like. <laughs> you know? You know, I'm just. I, <laughs> so it was cool. I accepted that he was going to beat me before the race even started. But what he did, he looks over at me, and Jerry, he looks at me, and he goes, and he kind of like looks at me up and down, and he goes, I could beat you jogging. And I was like, oh, it's on now. <laughs> I could beat you jogging. I said, all right, let's go. And so we line up. He's in the blocks, you know. He's getting all his stuff, and I'm just, I got no blocks. I'm just like this. <laughs> And everybody's watching, because remember, there's just two of us. And I don't know how this happened, how I'm in his heat. That should have never happened. But I'm lined up like this. They say, three, two, one, boom, we go. And I'm kind of, you know, and he just, poof, like Olympic trial speed, you know, just, poof, poof, and I'm kind of, <sighs> he takes off. My friends were like, on the first go around, he was so far ahead in front of you, it looked like a whole hundred meters. Like he just, and I'm just back there struggling. But I did not give up because he said those words to me. He, he said he was going to beat me jogging, and that really kind of messed with me. So I'm just like, you know what? I don't care if he's going to beat me this bad. I'm going to give it all I have. He's flying. He's just, he's flying. I get to the, the last turn. He's already done, by the way. So that's embarrassing. And I'm, I'm coming around the last, and I'm like, ah, ah, and everybody's watching me. And the guy with the timer is kind of like, come on now, buddy. Come on, you got this. And I'm on my last stretch, and uh, everything starts to fade. And I realize I said something like this last time, but everything starts to fade. And I'm just like, you know what? I don't care. I'm still going to run as hard as I can. And every, my legs start like staircase. <laughs> 30 yards before the finish line, not kidding you, I lose consciousness, fall, but I remember the last moment of everyone's face, and they go, ooh. And I go, ooh. Roll over, I, I wake up, like I, it, was, it was hardly for a second. I roll over, I'm like, oh, and they kept the race going, which I thought was kind of messed up, but I, I keep going, I was like, oh, and I just stumble past the finish line. And there's Jerry standing in there laughing at me. And we were done, and, and actually my coach came up to me and he said, he took Jerry's time, he messed with me, and he said, oh, hey, here's your time. And I was like, that's so good. He's like, just kidding. That was his time. And he walks away. And I was like, like all of my spirit was crushed. Every part of me was crushed. Embarrassed, crushed. But the thing about Jerry was that he was gifted. You see, Jerry had this gift that I probably could train every day of the year and still not be as fast as him. Even to this day, honestly. It was so easy to him. He didn't really have to try that hard. People will say, God gave him that gift. He could have woke up, he could have stayed up all night and raced me. Guess what? He's still beating me. 
Because he has a God-given gift. He knew his gift. He lived in his gift. And he let his gift change track in Bellevue and Omaha, honestly. And he was, because he lived in his gift. And you see, I was an okay runner. Middle of the pack, maybe. But he was, he, he understood his gifting. He lived in it. And, and therefore, he was able to do incredible, incredible things. I believe as the church, when we live in our gifts, just like Jerry lived in his gifts, incredible things happen. I believe when we live in our gifts and we focus on our gifts and we understand what we're good at, and by the way, what we're not good at, that we understand that we live in that and incredible, incredible things happen. And today we're going to talk through the process of how to live in these gifts. And so I have a little list up here. Well, the first piece, sorry, I went ahead a little bit. The first step to living in our gifts is first we need to know our gifts. Someone say, know our gift. We have to know it. We have to discover it. We have to know what it actually is. And the truth is, some of us, we, 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 we like doing other things, but there's just those things, right, that you can do that nobody else can do very well. Like, you can do it, and you're like, this just comes easy to me, you know? Like, you just do it, and you're just like, God has given me the gift to do this. There's a list up here that I made, and this is from some scriptures uh, kind of combined, and it talks about how, the Bible talks about how every single one of us have been given these gifts. Mercy, worship and music, teaching, preaching, giving, faith, encouragement. I, see, I meet some people here at Bridge Church, can I tell you, that are just incredible, incredibly gifted at encouragement. Service, starting ministries, feeding the poor, justice, serving children and youth, outreach and community impact. There's gifts of administration. There's so many gifts that God has given us. But the first step to living in our gifts is first we have to know our gifts. And can I tell you that knowing your gift and discovering it takes a process. It takes time. I think there, there, there's this kind of equation that I wrote. I really believe that there's God experiences that he gives us. I believe there's experiences that God has, has specifically given us that have developed gifts inside of us. I believe there's a personality piece to our gifting that God has made us a certain way, and he just made us that way. And the third piece is that there's passions. There's passions to our gifts. And when you put these three things together, we can kind of understand what has God gifted me to do? When I was a kid, my mom told me this, I used to like write little sermons. Do we have that clip up there, a the little picture? This is the first sermon that I was able to write. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was preaching to my room, but it says, hi, my name is Joey. We are going to have a series through Ezekiel. Now, I don't know why a nine-year-old is preaching Ezekiel, by the way. It's not a smart idea. And I said, now, Ezekiel is a very difficult book, so I will help you through this now. <laughs> and so we're actually going to go through Ezekiel, right? No, I'm just kidding. So turn your Bibles to Ezekiel, read to one and, and explain. So you just see these things, that there's things that God has given us experiences in our past that have, re, that have led us to the gifts that we have now. You know what I'm saying? Like there's things that God has just specifically put us in. There's, there's people in this church that are passionate about justice. They have a gift for the justices of the world, probably because they experience the injustices of the world right? And so the people experiences and the God experiences that we have really create the gifts that we have. And there's moments where God kind of just, just tells you just a little bit. You kind of like, I have a passion for this, so you try it. I have a passion for the youth, so you, tr you try to serve. And he starts to un unveil to your heart. He's like, I think you're gifted at this. A couple years, obviously, after that little sermon that I wrote on that notebook piece of paper, my, my uh, dad called me, and I was like 16, and he calls me, and he says, hey, we need someone for chapel. There's like 15 people there. He says, hey, I need someone for chapel to speak like this, and I said, you got the wrong guy. I said, no, 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 I don't do that. 
you don't understand. That's not me, right? But God started stirring something in my heart. So I go down to the chapel. I share my story. It was the worst sermon you've ever heard in your life. It was miserable. My face was so red that I thought it was a tomato was going to burst. You know what I'm saying? I was so red. It was the worst sermon you've ever heard. But there was something that God started to do. He, he started to develop and he said, Joey, I think you might be able to do that. You might have a gift, right? And I believe for all of us in here, there's little nudges that God has had in your heart that he said, I think you're gifted at this. And sometimes we push that away because it's scary. Like, uh, that's scary though. That means I have to talk in front of it, right? There's scary pieces, but can I tell you that when you know your gift, everything starts to change because you start to reveal it. You start to, hmm, you start to get curious. You think, maybe I can do that. Maybe I can do that. So the first step is to know your gift. But God has given us a, ah, I tested y'all. So if you're awake out there, God has given us a, He's got, he has given every single one of us a game-changing gift, but the first step is we have to know the gift. And a lot of us start to know. Do we have that list? Can we put that list up real quick? Really quick, I want you to pull out your phone, and I want you to start thinking. Go to, pull out your little Apple phone. iPhone, gosh. Android. If you have one, I'll pray for you. <laughs> Pull out your phone really quick. And I want you to look at this, this list for 30 seconds, okay? And I want you to start writing down what are some gifts that God, I believe that God has given me? What are some potential gifts that I believe God has wired me to do? And if they're not on here, that's fine. Write your own gift. But I want us this morning to start, get, start, get, starting, start to get curious about what God is doing, okay? So look at this list, and I want us just to write down really quick. I'll give you 10 seconds. Write down, what do you feel like God has wired and gifted you to do, okay? We're gonna know our gifts. Someone say, know your gift. The second step is to grow your gift. Someone say, grow your gift. When we realize that God has given us a, you got, you got to keep up, a game-changing gift, we not just need to know our gift, we need to grow our gift. So once you know it, now we got to grow it. And the truth is that growing your gift is not always easy. It's not always easy. There's times where, you know, one, we read about it and we start thinking about it and we think, oh, maybe I could start doing these things. But the truth is, and this is hard for, I believe, our culture to hear, is that failure is in the mixture of growth. That failure is one of the greatest ways that we can seek success in us finding our gifts. So we know it, but now the question is, how do we grow our gift? And the truth is we have to exercise it, which means we could fail. I'll never forget one of the first times I ever was able to communicate. I was giving this talk and it was bad again. It was just bad. Just a bad talk. And it was what it was. And I was, I was kind of going like this and, you know, nervous and all this stuff. And in the crowd, there was probably 40 people. This guy stands up. And I'm kind of like, I have no experience, obviously, at all. And I'm kind of like, I didn't do it for very long, but I knew something was wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like something is not right here. This guy stood up. And so I just started preaching over here. <sighs> you know, I'm, I'm looking over here, but he's standing up over here. He starts to come up down the aisle right here. And he's, he, he walks onto the stage. And I'm over here like, Help. Someone help me. No, no one told me about this one. And so I just keep talking over here. And he's just standing right here, just staring at me. And I'm kind of like, whoa. And he walks over. 
and he grabs the mic out of my hand. And now I really don't know what to do. He took it, and I was just kind of, well, this is what it is. I don't know what to do. I'm just standing here like this. He gets up, and he goes, I don't like what this guy is saying right here. And I was like, well, that's not good. He said, and I don't agree with him. And then he said all these, like, whatever things, and then he just goes, And I said, thanks. And I take back the mic. And I just shrivel over here. And he walks down like he said his piece. I was like, well, there's that. And so I look at all the people and I go, well, nothing else I can say. Have a nice day. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. And so people were like, what the heck just happened? And they left. And it was a disaster. And I went home and I remember telling God, I said, I will never do that again. Never. But God looked at me and he said, trying, exercising, and fail is part of the process. He said, this is a part of you exercising the gift that I have given you. It's not always pretty, but it's powerful. And so when we have these gifts, all of us do. We start to realize that when we exercise them, it's not always pretty. It's just not. But it's powerful powerful. There's a text here for this. It's um, in 1 Timothy, and Paul is talking to Timothy, and he's talking to Timothy about his gift. And what happened was Timothy was discouraged because he felt like his gifting, he wasn't meeting his expectations of God's gifts on his life. But this is what Paul says to him as his mentor. He says, this is what I'm here to tell you. Do not neglect your gift which was given to you. Through prophecy, when the body of elders laid their hands on you, but be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. And so Paul tells Timothy, he says, I know you have your gift. I know you know your gift. But can I tell you, do not give up on your gift because God needs you to use your gift for the kingdom of God. He said, it's for the kingdom. The kingdom of God needs it. And can I tell you that the kingdom of God needs your gift? You might be sitting there saying, well, I love singing, but there's no way I would get on this stage and sing back here with Chris and the band. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God needs your gift? You say, oh, but I, can't, I know I can speak. I've done it before, but when I come up here, that's scary. That's a lot of people. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God needs your gift? You think, I love community outreach. Maybe I could be a lighthouse leader someday, but can I tell you that the kingdom of God needs that gift? Y'all with me this morning? Because God has given us a? Game-changing gift. A game-changing gift. The kingdom needs it. And so when we know our gift, it's great. It's awesome. A lot of us know we're gifted at things, but it's when we actually exercise it, we grow it. It starts to become who we are. The third piece is that we show our gift. And there was a lot of powerful moments in the early church of when they, show, they showed their gift, they lived it out. They knew their gifting. They had had some experiences of failure and they really grew it. But there was a moment when they showed their gift is when the world was changed. There's a text here in Acts. It said this. In those days, the numbers of disciples were increasing. The Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the distribution of food. So the 12 gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry, so that's their gifting, of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brother and sister, choose seven men from a Mount from out, you are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over them. And so they said, that's your gift. That's not my gift, but here you go. And we will give our attention to prayer and the prayer of the ministry of the word. So the word of God, someone say it with me, spread. Let's say it again, spread. That's like a ripple effect. So the word of God spread. See, what happened was, 
They knew their gift. They had experiences growing their gift, but they showed their gift. And they knew that I'm going to do this, and you're going to do this, and we're going to see the kingdom of God spread. And there's something powerful when we all live in our gifts. There's something powerful when people here at Bridge Church plan events, and there's something powerful when Joey doesn't plan the event. Because when Joey plans the event, it's a mess. But when someone organized plans the event, it's powerful. There's something powerful when people are decorating the gym, and there's some people who should not be doing that. Amen? <laughs> There's something powerful when we live through our gifts because it becomes our lifestyle. It becomes who we are. We know what our role is on this team. Someone say, I know my role. We all have roles. And so when we live through our gifts, things change. But when we know and we show it, it's powerful. There's a few stories here. Um, we got some people here at Bridge Church that have impacted my life in an incredible way. I don't know if you know this, but this morning, these guys right here showed up early. They showed up before we even got here and we're setting up all these chairs. Matt, are you guys here? Can you just stand up for a second? Where are y'all at? Cam. Anybody else? Where's Matt? Matt not here? He's probably serving. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Right? They showed up before we were here. They knew their gifting. Matt Gobranson and his little crew have a gift of service. And man, they live, it. They live through it. It's powerful. I've got a picture up here of uh, Tyrese and Tashara. Who loves Tyrese? What some of us don't know is that Tyrese was the one who picked them up. And we're apart, and Tyrese has a gift of leadership. Where's Reese? Is he in here? He just left? Okay, Tashara, can you stand up really quick? We love you, Tashara. You guys are incredible. But again, I showed up early this morning. They were already here. That's powerful. But, sh but Tyrese was using his gift of leadership to pick up those who had the gift of service. And now we're here this morning. I got a picture of, uh, who's it, Ruth and, okay, Myron and Wendy. I don't know if you know Myron Bridges, but he is here every, seems like day, working back in that hospitality booth, getting it ready for all of us. A lot of us don't know that, but he has a gift of service and hospitality. Him and his wife, Wendy, are incredible. We have a picture of Ruth and, Ruth and Michelle here. Nope, don't have one? Okay. Miss Ruth, are you here? Where are you at? Come on, Miss Ruth. You got to stand up for it real quick. Come on. Miss Ruth and Michelle. Michelle, are you here? Nope. Okay. But a lot of us don't know. Miss Ruth is there every single Sunday, getting things prepared in here, getting things prepared in the hospitality. She uses her gifts. And can I tell you, the world is changing because these people are using their gifts. And so when we use it, when we show it, things start to change. The world starts to change. Can I tell you in here that you might be thinking, Joey, I don't, I don't really have a gift. The Bible is very clear. It says that every single one of us has, has been given at least one of these gifts. And so there's no excuse, by the way. <laughs> there's no excuse. We all have a gift. And can I tell you that here at Bridge Church, we want to empower you in that gift. We want to find it in you, and we want to empower you, and we want to support you in whatever you're passionate about for the kingdom of God. Y'all excited to change the world together? God has given us a? I like that. Know your gift, grow your gift, show your gift. Powerful. So where do we go from here? What's the action steps that we need to live out as a church? One. We need to identify your gifts. My challenge for every single one of us this week is to, like what we did earlier, start writing down your gifts. Start writing them down. If you already know your gifts, can I tell you, write them down on your screensaver. Have them in front of your face all the time and say, God, I'm going to serve you through these gifts. 
Write them down, like I said. Jump into opportunity. Once you know your gift, then you can start to jump. If you're passionate about kids, can I tell you, you can get involved here, but you can also get involved in a lot of things in this city. God, how can I start living through this gift? If you have a gift of prayer, can I tell you, you can start praying for people right now. If you have a gift that you want to start praying for people, start praying for people in this place right now. God can use you right now. And then the fourth thing is match your gifts with our family here at Bridge Church. When you say, you know, I have a gift of prayer, I want to pray. Awesome. 7.30 a.m. every Sunday we meet right here to pray. You say, man, I, I have a gift with children. I love serving children. Great. We have an incredible children's ministry here at Bridge, led by Samantha and Jennifer. If you want to be like, I want to mentor the next generation, incredible. We have youth and basketball. We've got a ton of programs here. If you say, I want to be involved with the community, man, great. We have events and community events and lighthouses. Can I tell you that we all have a gift to give? So are y'all ready to get connected to what we're doing here with God? Your gift matters. Your gift matters. It does. Can I say from just a personal perspective, we as a church need your gift. We need it. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Write it down. Start to exercise it just in your life and get connected to what we're doing here at Bridge Church. Because God has given us a... God has given us a game-changing gift. Love y'all. Can we thank Joey, Pastor Joey, one more time? Come on. Look at somebody say, know it. Look at somebody say, know it. Know it. We've got to know our gifts. We've got to know it. We've got to know it. When Joey said that, one of the thoughts that came to my mind is, no gift is greater than another. Sometimes we look at people, man, I want their gift. You ever had gift envy? Man, I want the gift that they got. Can I tell you, no gift is greater than another. Your gift is a game-changing gift. Whatever gift it is, it's game-changing. But you got to know it. Say know it. You got to know it. Number two, you got to grow it. I love that. You got to grow it. Your gift is only as great as you grow it. You see people doing great things for God. They've been growing it. I love what Joey said, man, I'll never do that again. Can I tell you, there's so many Sundays I walk away saying, I am never preaching again. We don't always feel it, but I also love the scripture that says, in our weakness, he is made stronger. And so sometimes it's in those points, man, I don't have what it takes. I can't do this. I don't have the patience to be with kids all the time. Can I tell you that it's in his, our weakness that he gives us the strength to do things and live out a gift that we never thought we could. I got to know it. I got to grow it. Somebody say grow it. And then I get to show it. And I love the scripture that he shared. The, the, the disciples, they said, man, we got to live out our gift. So we got to empower other people to live out their gifts so this ministry can continue on. One of the things we talked about last week as a church is we want to see more ministries birthed this year. We believe that there are ministries, there are people that need to experience the, the, the variety of ministries, but it comes when people who have a gift say, I'm willing to use my gift to lead. And ministries are birthed. And before you know it, people who have needs in different areas, those needs are being met because ministries are being started because people recognize that their game-changing gift is used to, 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 to launch these ministries. And then the gospel, the good news of Jesus is expressed. Your game-changing gift isn't just about our church. It's about the world. It's about people experiencing Jesus. Can I tell you, when you recognize what your game-changing gift is and you live it out at your workplace, people will see you and recognize something different in you. Man, he is good at that. 
wow, the way when I'm around her, she encourages me. I feel built up. What is it inside of you? You're different. And you can say, it's my game-changing gift. It's my game-changing gift. And every game-changing gift comes from God. And so if you're here today and you would say, man, I don't know that I have a game-changing gift. Can I tell you that it starts with getting connected to the game changer who created you? And when we have a relationship with God, he starts to unlock things inside of us that we never knew were in there to begin with. And so the first place we have to get connected to is God. And maybe you're here today and you say, man, I, I, I've never really made that decision. I've actually been searching for purpose. I've been searching for meaning. I've been trying to discover why I really exist, but you've never been connected to your creator. We can't explore our game-changing gift without being connected to the game changer, Jesus. And so if that's you and you're here today, it's so easy. He says, man, by faith, you can come to me, for it's by faith you're saved, through grace. It's nothing that you and I can do, nothing. We can't try harder, we can't do more. We just have to receive this free gift of grace by faith. Invite him to take his rightful position in our lives, and he starts to change us. With heads bowed, eyes closed, if you're here today and you said, man, I, 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 I've, maybe I've prayed a prayer, maybe I've thought some thoughts, man, I've shown up to church, but I've never fully surrendered myself to Jesus. I recognize that my gift starts with the person who gave me that gift. I know that everything in our life always doesn't always change in a day but when we say yes to jesus he starts to change us every single day and before we know it we become a new person the old us is gone a new life is here and so if you're here today and you say man josh i want to i want to become a new person i want to enter into that relationship with jesus i want to say yes we get to simply invite him. And so if you're here today and, 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 and you just know that God is speaking to your heart, you know that he's asking you to respond in some way, and you're ready to say yes to Jesus, we're going to pray with you. But I just want you to put your hand in the air. Say, you know what, that's me. I know he's speaking to me, and I want to respond. I know he's speaking to me and I want to respond. Putting your hand up in the air, that is by faith saying, I want to respond. I want to respond, yes. I want to respond. I want to respond. We're going to pray together. And if you put your hand in the air, we want to talk to you afterwards. We want to connect with you. You're saying by faith, I want to trust Jesus. We're going to pray this prayer. I want everybody to pray it together. But together, we're making a declaration to put Jesus in his rightful place. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. I realize that you are the gift giver. And for years, I've tried to discover my gift without being connected to you. I repent of my ways, I want to turn to you, I want to engage in a relationship with you so you can change me and use me. I want to know my gift, I want to grow it, and I want to show it to the world. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm telling you again, if you prayed a prayer, if you prayed that prayer and you're sincere in your heart, I want to engage in a relationship with Jesus. He's going to start changing you. You're going to start seeing some changes in you and you're going to start to uncover and discover the giftings that God has given you. And we want to help you grow it so you can show it to the world. Amen? Amen. Well, could everybody stand up? Everybody stand up. 
We started last week with a declaration. We're going to end this week with a declaration together saying this is what I'm going to do. Somebody say today. Say today. I got a game changing gift. I'm going to know it. I'm going to grow it. And I'm going to show it. So the world will know the God I serve. Come on, Bridge Church. If you believe it, say that's what's up. Make some noise. Hey, as you guys leave today, you got to high five at least five people. Tell them you got a game changing gift. You've got a game changing gift. High five them. Say you've got a game changing gift. Enjoy the day. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week.